Um, so it's not just me this morning, we have the amazing Dish coming as well, and uh, she's going to be sharing with us a little bit as well. So it's going to be a good morning. Um, like Andy said, we're kind of carrying on uh, kind of Vision 22, 2022 series. Um, and if you're someone like me, you might not actually get excited by words like vision and mission and strategy and all those sorts of things. Because in my head, you know, Pete Gregg puts it really well when he says, the vision, the vision is Jesus. <laughs> Obsessively, undeniably Jesus. That's what gets me excited, having a vision um, that is all about seeking him, seeking his heart. Um, but I'm okay with this topic because he's sharing his heart with us. And he's giving us priorities and things to focus on um, for this year. And, you know, we're not coming up with some strategy just to do a load of stuff. But we want to be pursuing Jesus in every single way. And if it's not a part of that, if he's not going, then we don't want to, we don't want to go there. <laughs> so, yeah, hear what we're trying to do. Um, so, this week um, we're going to be talking, what are you going to be talking in Dish? Um, on the subject of outreach. So last week we had discipleship. If you didn't catch it, then um, I think it'll be online as of this morning. Um, and we've got a wonderful topic next week, which is about all things pastoral, I believe, um, which is going to be exciting. But this week it's outreach, um, or you, know, you can call it social action slash evangelism, if you wanted to. Uh, apparently they weren't catching enough titles for you, though. So um, what we've gone with, if you come to the next slide, Gideon, Gone with ambassadors for Christ. Yes. Um, so that's from the passage in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20, which says, So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. Um, now, if you didn't know what an ambassador was, it is an accredited diplomat sent by a state as its representative in a foreign country. There you go. Well, you will, I think that's, that's a good point. Um, so, uh, as ambassadors, we are sent by God on his behalf um, as ambassadors of heaven. So we are carriers of the kingdom of heaven everywhere we go. We get to be his representatives here on the earth. But yes, as Andy said, the only thing I think of when I say the word ambassador is actually an old advert. I don't know if many remember it. For Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> um, so I am hopeful that one day when we get to the pearly gates, there will maybe be a lot of there of some description with a, a pyramid of Ferrero Rocher um, to reward us for being great ambassadors for Christ, because the ambassador always has Ferrero Rocher. Um, oh yeah. So next slide, did you? What we're going to do is I'm going to go through um, just a few prophetic words to start with that we've had as Hope Church um, about this subject. Then I'm going to kind of go into a little bit of what the Bible says about it, um, and then this is going to come and share a bit about um, how it kind of fits into Hope Church's vision. Um, Jesus' vision uh, for Hope Church. Um, so, yes, prophetic words. I mean, I kind of think what I'm talking about this morning is kind of silly because we all know that outreach is an awesome thing and that we're supposed to do it. <laughs> um, do you need a prophetic word to know that we're supposed to share the love of God with everybody? No. But we are blessed to have some anyway, so here we are. And it's good to know that God's spoken some specific things over us as a body um, and that He's actually got things for us as a family together that he wants to use us for. So, here we go. Um, now, this first one was back in 2008, even before my time in Hope Church, by, by one year, I think I joined in 2009, um, by a, ge- a guy called Steve Appel, not Apple, Appel. Um, and he said that Hope Church will be a beacon church, a lampstand on a hill that cannot be hidden, a very bright and large light that can be seen for miles around, and that many will come because of the bright light. So great news, everyone. We are a bright light. Um, He's put his light in us, and as a church, we're going to shine for miles around. So I think that includes Glasgow and includes uh, Scotland, um, and that people are going to come because of that bright light. So next slide, Gideon. Then in 2009, we had a word from a guy called Phil Ford, who is an absolute legend, who many of you know, who used to be an elder here. Um, And I'm going to read it out. It's a little bit long, but it talks about how God's uh, wanting to impact the city through us. So I felt that God was calling us again to believe these promises for our church and our lifetimes, to lay down our disappointments and take up faith in his perfect plans. I said that the glory of the Lord would cover the earth as the waters cover the sea, that the glory of the Lord would flow through the west of Glasgow, 
through the university into the hearts of even the most atheistic professors, and that the glory of the Lord would flow through the city center, through the places of consumerism, to the people who saw answers in material possessions, that the glory of the Lord would flow through the East End into the dark places of suffering, of addiction, and hopelessness, and that the glory of the Lord would flow through the South Side, through broken families and fatherless children. So, I mean, this is encouraging stuff that, that God's spoken over us, that he's put his glory in us, and that he wants his glory through us to flow through all these places um, and through all these people. I mean, we know this city needs God, um, and he wants to use us to, to do it. Um, so Gideon, yeah. Then we had some pretty significant prophetic words from a guy called Julian Adams in 2013 and 2019. Um, very quick summary of what he said about outreach. There, are going, there is going to be an overflow of many people getting saved. <laughs> which is great. Um, now, we've seen some people getting saved, but I don't think we've seen an overflow yet. I'm not even sure what an overflow looks like. It probably looks pretty crazy, um, but that's what God's spoken over us as a church that we're going to see. Um, so, this is, this is good. It's encouraging for us because it's been a bit of a tough two years, hasn't it? So, God's spoken some amazing things over us. Um, yeah, this is one of them. Uh, then, the final one I'm going to have a quick look at is um, from one of, our, one of our 24-7 prayer times. So, um, when the pandemic hit, we decided to pray because, um, you know, we actually couldn't do a lot else, to be honest with you. Um, um, and keeping our eyes fixed on him was a, a good call. But God spoke to us all um, in, in different ways, but along kind of the same theme. Um, so there was a place on Facebook where we could all write what God was speaking to us. And there was a really common theme about the harvest being ready. Um, send out the workers into the harvest um, and uh, there was a good word from Mark Spicer that kind of summed it up a little bit. So again, I'll read it out. Mr. Spicer at the back there. Shout out to you. Um, As I was praying, I was looking out of the window at a deserted street, and it felt like God showed me the effect of this. It's like a dam. The water is building up behind it. The people are kept indoors in lockdown, the water rising, but there'll be a release. And when the water flows, the desert will bloom. It will be a season of fruitfulness creativity nurtured in isolation, energy revived in the enforced stillness, hunger for God stirred in the midst of uncertainty. The church will explode with life like the desert that bursts into flower when rain comes, and the lost will flood into the kingdom. Let's lean into this. Allow Father to stir your hunger again, feed your soul, fellowship with Holy Spirit, so that we are ready for the day of his blessings. Um, now, I just think this this the season is now. <laughs> um, the dam is ready to burst, and uh, the church is ready to explode with life, and we're going to see all sorts of flowers and stuff coming in the desert um, across our city. So, yes, be encouraged, Hope Church. God thinks highly of us <laughs> to uh, entrust us with these things. Okay, um, next. I'm not even using my words. My bits of paper here. We're going to look at some kind of biblical passages about outreach. Again, you're probably thinking, Steve, I know this. We're supposed to do it. Why bother? But I'm going to anyway. I've got another, what, 10 minutes. So here we go. Um, right, we're going to start here. Uh, so we're going to go through the Bible, basically, in the next seven or eight minutes, starting at the beginning. Um, Genesis 1, uh, God created the heavens and the earth. Um, then he, he created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds in the air and every living thing that moves upon the earth. So, you might think, why have I, why have I put this one up there? Um, because from the beginning, us as humans, we were created to extend God's kingdom of peace. Adam and Eve were created in the Garden of Eden, place of peace where, where God himself walked outside. It was kind of wild and, and crazy. And God's commission to, to mankind was to go fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over it. So, you know, for Adam and Eve, it might have looked a little bit different to what it does to us. It might have looked a bit more like uh, gardening. Gideon, if you can press on, there's uh, a guy here showing us what it might have looked like for Adam and Eve to have dominion over his hedge um, and extend that into uh, the wilderness beyond, taming that hedge like a, like a genius. What a guy. Um, but God's called us to extend the kingdom of heaven. Um, he's put it inside us, and that commission hasn't changed since the beginning of time until now. Um, so moving on a bit further into Genesis, obviously we know what happened after, you know, 
after the Garden of Eden, it all went a little bit peak tong. Um, Adam and Eve had a bit of a mare and uh, ate an apple, uh, as you know we all kind of do in, a, in the same way in our lives. Um, but you know, God wasn't overawed by that. He had a plan, and his plan was to uh, bless a guy called Abram, who then became Abraham, and then the nation of Israel. Um, so this is, uh, is what he said to Abram. The Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you, and I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Um, so God has blessed us, hasn't he? Um, and he chose to bless Israel, the nation of Israel. Um, but it's not just so that we can sit around being blessed. God has blessed us to be a blessing. Um, that was his plan for reaching the earth. And again, it's still his plan to bless us. Uh, we love to receive from him. We love amazing times in his presence, but he blesses us so that we can be a blessing. We love it when he blesses us with good things, which he loves to do, but we are blessed to be a blessing. There is a purpose behind it all to extend the kingdom of God. Cool. Next one, Gideon. So, moving th swiftly through the Bible, we're going Old Testament into New Testament a little bit here. So, this is uh, a passage that Jesus uh, quoted at the start of his ministry um, in Luke 4. I'm going to read it from Isaiah 61. Um, it says, uh, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the, planted of the planting of the Lord, that they may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise the former devastations, and they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. So this is kind of Jesus saying what he was going to do at the beginning of his ministry. Um, it wasn't only for Jesus, as we'll see when we come on to the Great Commission. Spoiler alert. Um, but this, this, is, this is what he's got. Um, and it says, good news to the poor. Um, good news. I mean, let's just focus on the word good news. I feel like sometimes we get so familiar with the gospel that we forget the good news. That it, It's good news, guys. Come on. Jesus has saved me. He's saved you. Like, he's brought us from uh, death to life. Um, he's literally, he came amongst us, walked amongst us as a man, and died so that we uh, can be raised with him and have eternal life so that we can live in freedom, so that there can be freedom uh, for the captives, um, that people who are bound can be set free. I mean, uh, so many people are bound by so many things, and God wants to set us free. He wants to set them free out in the city. There's addictions to all sorts of things going on, um, and God is the answer to all of them. He's the one who heals the brokenhearted. He heals our ail ailments. We see it in Revelation 21, the picture of what the kingdom of heaven is going to be like. There's going to be no more tears. There's going to be no more sickness. There's going to be no more pain. Every tear will be wiped away. This is the kingdom of God that he has put in us, and it is good news, and he's put it inside of us, and he's created us to be the ones, his ambassadors on this earth, to go and carry that to the world around us. So, like, I was getting quite excited preparing this, to be honest, because uh, I was reminded that it's good news. I'm, I'm not just preaching to you, I'm preaching to me here, like, that this is something that he's called us to um, as a people, um, and it's exciting. It's exciting to have a purpose. <laughs> um, Right, and then, yeah, spoiler alert, over, let's move on to the Great Commission, um, which they used last week in the discipleship one, as you can probably see why as well. Um, but Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am all with you always to the end of the age. Um, so I guess the bit I'll, I'd focus on here is the go therefore. <laughs> um, he says it just there, go therefore. We're called to go, not just to stay. Um, we're called to receive, yes, but we're also called to go and make disciples of all nations. And he's given us the authority that was on him to do that, um, which is just absolutely mind-blowing. But, but he has. Um, and 
which is, is great. So, you know, what I'm bringing this morning, it, it's a bit challenging. Um, it's not the easiest thing, like outreach, you know, we've all got pictures of what that looks like. Um, maybe not great pictures of what it looks like. Maybe we're sitting here feeling a bit scared. Um, but it's okay to be challenged. Uh, that's something I like to say. Uh, it's actually probably good to be challenged um, every now and again. I, I, I'm, f- I'm feeling the challenge <laughs> on this one this morning. Um, so I don't want us to feel condemned that maybe we've not been doing this, um, but I want us to feel convicted that God's got this for us and that he's actually got a purpose for us. Because deep down inside, I believe that each one of us is a new creation and that God's put his heart in us and he loves to share his heart with us and that we each actually have a desire and a yearning for more to be used by the creator of the heavens and the earth to extend his kingdom. Um, So this is an exciting thing. It can be a bit of a scary thing, but that's okay. Uh, God is with us to the end of the age. Um, So yeah, Um, and what I don't want to do as well is slip into some sort of workspace theology. We're not doing this stuff to earn... God's favor or anything. Um, We're saved by grace um, through faith. It's a gift of God. It's nothing we can do to achieve that. Um, He's done it for us as a great, great gift. Um, I guess uh, there's a good passage in 1 John 4, 19, which says, we love because he first loved us. Um, So this this is our kind of desire, is that we receive love from God, and then it bubbles up within us and overflows, and we share that with the world around us. And, you know, maybe that's what you need to hear this morning is you need to just encounter God's love a little bit more, um, which is an absolutely fine place to be at. I mean, to be honest, we all need that, don't we? Um, We need to encounter God's love a little bit more. Um, But, you know, we don't need to get to a certain place before we can do this stuff either, which I think Dish is going to share a little bit. But God loves to use a people who are on a journey, and we're all on a journey. Um, Just those disciples, look at them, they were all a a little bit crazy, weren't they? Um, and God used them. So you move on to the last slide. A quote here from Heidi Baker um, says, love looks like something. Um, so do we love those around us? I mean, we'd hopefully say yes. Maybe we need to receive a bit more love to help us love them a bit more. <laughs> um, some of them even more so. But love looks like something. Um, yeah, basically saying it, it's not just something we want to talk about. We want to actually go out there and bless those around us, whether that's individually, whether that's as a church. We want to be those who share the love of God, share that kind of communion that Andy was talking about with uh, the world around us. Um, it looks like lots of different things, but it does look like something. Um, so uh, Dish is going to come now and share um, a few things with you. <laughs> I could keep your Star Wars. <laughs> I'm not very good at bits of paper, so excuse me while I log into this. There we go. Uh, So, aha. Yeah, so I'm going to be talking a bit more about what we're actually specifically going to do um, as a church in 2022 with regards to outreach. But before I do that, I just want to talk about these words. Can you cycle through? Thanks. So we evangelism, social action, outreach... What do we mean by these words? Um, one more, yeah. Uh, we, we're using all these words a lot. I'm an English language teacher. Words are really important, and you want to make sure everybody's on the same page <laughs> about what these words mean. Just a disclaimer, this isn't, I'm not going to define this. This is not the universal definition that everyone uses, but I just wanted to clarify what we mean when we're using these words. So, um, When we're using this word outreach, what we're saying is reaching out to people outside of the Church of Christ, not our church specifically, but any church. Um, We are, when we say evangelism, we're saying actually telling people about Jesus or praying for them. Um, And social action, by that we mean actually showing love and compassion with practical acts. So I might use these words Again, later on, I just wanted to clarify what I was talking about. Uh, So, um, we have some goals. And yes, both evangelism and social action are equally important to us as a church. I just wanted to say that as well. Can you go forward a bit? Thank you. So, we've got some goals for outreach at Hope Church in 2022. The first one is that we actually are going to do some outreach together as a church. Yay! (laughs) We're actually going to do something, (laughs) not just talk about it. 
And the other one is that we want to stir each other up to love and good works. Um, Mark, my Mark, and uh, Jan McFarlane talked about this last week when they were talking about discipleship as well. But um, this applies to outreach too. So I'm just going to talk about what we're actually going to do. So the plan, next slide, yep. Uh, and then the first point, Gideon, thanks. So the plan is that we're going to start or continue at least one outreach initiative. It could be two. Um, and uh, we don't actually know what that is going to be yet. <laughs> uh, the specifics are all to be decided um, but either way, there's going to be opportunities for social action, um, so reaching out with practical acts of love and compassion, and there'll be opportunities for evangelism, so actually praying for or telling people about Jesus. Um, it's all very much at the drawing board stages, so I'm kind of in the process of sidestepping out of leading Welcome at Hope, um, so I've got more time to make this happen because I really, I really get excited about it. I'm really passionate about it, so... Um, I'm just starting the process of building a team around me to lead it with me. Um, and the hope is that, you know, we'll be praying through and looking at what came out of the think tanks. I know a few of you were involved in these um, that we did before the summer. So we had like a social action one and we had an evangelism one. And there were so many amazing, wonderful ideas and um, like passions that people expressed at those. And um, so we're going we're gonna to look at those, we're going to look at prophetic words that God's given us, the ones that Steve showed you, and there's a couple more as well, and then that hopefully will inform us to um, what we do, what we decide to do, and, and then after that, we'll put it out there and invite you all to get involved. So watch this space, I w you will hear from me, <laughs> and it will be this year, so <laughs> um, this is a 2022 plan. Um, the other thing I just want to say is I think it's easy to think, oh, what's the point in doing stuff together as a church? There are lots of other organizations that do this really well. Um, I, I believe it's really important. Uh, you know, many of us are being ambassadors for Christ in our daily lives and interactions. I actually do social action, social action in my day job. Um, but in the people that I meet, like in their, their lives, I'm the only Christian they know quite often. They're just seeing me as one individual body part, like not the collective whole body of Christ or even part of, like a bigger part of it. And I just feel like when we do things together, actually people get a fuller picture of Jesus. And they also, you know, when we do things together, we all have different strengths and giftings. We get to like lean on each other's strengths. We get to Com, you know, it complement, we complement each other in what we do, and we can accomplish so much more together. Um, so yes, I'm excited about this. Um, the next thing, keep going, keep going. Oh yes, just to say as well that whatever we do, we plan to embody these things. This is from the Hope Church vision statement. Um, I'm not going to read through them because I don't have time. So, uh, but they will be shared, like the slides are going to get shared at, I think, via email and Facebook after this. So you can go ahead and read them. And can you go to the next slide, Gideon? Um, so I've included Supernatural in there because a lot of the things on there are kind of relevant to outreach as well and will influence how we actually do this. So you should go and read those. I'll make sure they're posted in the right places so you can go and look at those for yourself. So next slide. So the other part of our plan, as I said, was stirring each other up to love and good works. Um, so Mark and Jan McFarlane were talking about discipleship last week and they were talking about how they're going to be starting one-to-one -one mentoring and impact teams. If you don't know what that is, you should go and listen to that talk from last week, or you can ask, sorry to put you on the spot, Mark. <laughs> you can go and ask my dear husband about it if you want to know more. Um, but our hope is that actually we'll grow in the, the area of outreach through these initiatives, not just other things. So that as part of that, we're, yeah. And also in June, hopefully, this is TBC, 
Um, we're going to have a month uh, where we focus on outreach as a church. So uh, the purpose of this month is to inspire, inspire us and equip us all to get better at being ambassadors for Christ in our day-to-day -day lives. And the teaching for this month will be focused on that topic, like on Sunday mornings, and there'll be opportunities to go out on the streets and practice what we've learned. Um, more details about that will be coming soon. Yes, trees. <laughs> I love trees. If any of you know me, um, well, you know this. <laughs> and I love how the Bible talks about us being trees. And, um, you know, I, we quite often see uh, um, this image when we're thinking about and talking about roots. So, you know, we're called to be trees with this deeper root system as we have branches that reach up. Um, but actually, I think quite often we focus on the roots and developing a deep root system, and I think that's really important. You know, we want to be rooted and built up in him and strong in the faith and, and you know, emotionally functioning well, and um, that's really, really important, and we need to focus on these things, and we are going to focus on these things, but we can't have one without the other. We need those big outreaching branches. You know, I would even argue that the purpose of a tree is to stand tall, and to have those big outreaching branches and leaves that bring healing for the nations and to produce fruit. Um, can you take, yeah, look at that. Aren't trees so beautiful? <laughs> um, when we all start to embrace the fullness of who we are as these trees, and I think when we stand together as trees, a forest of trees, um, that's when we become this beacon people. You know, Steve talked about the prophetic word of us that we were called to be this bright light shining. I feel like if we're actually being ourselves and coming into this full fullness, then actually uh, that's when we start to do that really well. And it's this isn't for our benefit. It's for the benefit of our city and for the world. You know, the world needs us um, to, to do this. And actually doesn't have to look like, there's no hope church type, it doesn't have to look like um, something specific, it just needs to look like you being you and loving the people well around you. So, talking of spurring each other on, I'm going to introduce you to my friend Sheila. <laughs> so, I have the privilege of being part of the same small group as Sheila and she's involved in quite a few different outreach and social action activities, but she's just amazing at just love for Jesus just pours out of her and she's amazing at sharing Jesus with the people around her. So I, whenever she talks about this and shares stories at small group, I get really inspired and excited and it stirs me up to want to do the same. So I wanted to give you an experience of Sheila for yourselves. <laughs> so, oh, I should ask first question, which I should have put in my notes, but it's not. Okay, so my first question is, how do you partner with God as you go about your daily life? I partner with God um, by seeing uh, each day as an adventure. And when I go out, he's got um, assignments or divine appointments for me. And uh, I just like to be switched on to that. Sometimes I'm not switched on. I'm a bit distracted and I miss opportunities and I don't like that. So I like to be switched on and uh, seeing the opportunity. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a story of a particular divine appointment that you had? Sorry, that's put me on the spot a little bit. Um, <laughs> uh, well, um, I met my neighbour and uh, he was just coming out of his house. I was just coming out of my house and uh, I said, where are you going? And he said, I'm going to heaven. And I said, well, you need to know Jesus then. And he said... <laughs> <laughs> And he said, what are you saying? Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> I said, no, Jesus, you need to ask him into your heart and give him your life. And he go, oh, like that. So I pray for him every day. I said, I pray for you every day. So that's one story. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, uh, just to, uh, yeah, you're involved in some other things as well, aren't you? Um, can you tell us really briefly about what you do? And yeah, I volunteer with Glasgow City Mission and there I serve meals some weeks and teas and coffees other weeks. And when it gets quiet, I uh, get a chance to talk to and pray for um, the clients and have some really interesting conversations. 
can also do um, street pastors, volunteer with street pa pastors, and we help the homeless, um, give them numbers and sandwiches and drinks and uh, encourage them and pray for them. Wonderful. <laughs> so what is it that inspires you and motivates you to, to pray for people and share Jesus with the people you meet? Um, I just uh, feel that um, they need to know the love of Jesus as well. Um, they've got great need in their life and um, I know that Jesus can meet their need. Um, yeah, so I like to pray for them and, and let them know, encourage them that Jesus can meet that need. Um, sometimes they don't quite believe it and I see that they can't believe it and I say that to them, but I pray for them anyway and I say that Jesus will change things for you. Thank you, Sheila. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Father, we thank you for your good news, for the gospel for the good news that is in our lives. We thank you that you've saved us, God, that you've set us free and that you've commissioned us, Lord. You've given us um, your authority to go and be your hands and feet on this earth. Lord Jesus, would you come and just destroy fear in this place and would you come and bring uh, excitement um, and hope. Lord Jesus, would you fill us with your hope um, for seeing your kingdom come in this city. Uh, thank you, Jesus. We love you. Amen.